I know a lot of people will talk about the fact that you know the first time you came across Max Verstappen, who's the big rival in uh, in Formula One, was when you were racing together in the junior categories. And in go kart, it was those years, you know, when we were with my dad against you know him and his dad. You know, his dad had the experience before because he raced in go kart, so they had a little bit of an advantage on that side. But my dad and his dad at the time, you know, they were doing a little bit of a similar, similar thing. So really hats off to them as well uh, for what they've done. Absolutely. And so what was that rivalry like then between you and him and between the two dads as well? Because I've seen the go-kart world, it can be fiery. Yeah, it, it was, <laughs> to be fair, it was very fiery, but everybody was, was uh, a little bit scared, you know, of, of Jos and, and Max at the time because Jos was driving Formula One before, so... Uh, he, he's new for his how, how fierce and how you know um, scary it can be. You know, talking to to other young kids and all that uh, on go kart tracks. But you know, my dad and and myself, we were never scared because we just wanted to race. You know, and wanted to race hard, and we've raced hard. We've raced really hard, and at times we cross lines. You know, um, at at certain go kart races. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, we've been by that is that we sometimes didn't finish to the places that we were supposed to finish because of how hard the fights were, you know, in go karts. But all of that, you know, made me learn a lot um, on how to race, and and I hope you know it made him learn, you know, a, a good amount as well. Um, and then we've met again in Formula Three later, you know, from go kart in 2011, three years break, and then we met in Formula Three racing for the title uh, as well. And, and there I was hard racing as well. So I've enjoyed you know, the racing with Max. I've always enjoyed I think, you know, tough racing is always uh, cool uh, to me. You know, racing side by side, being very close. That's what racing is all about. Um, there's nothing, nothing else that uh, makes me that exciting. So when you raced for the title in Formula 3 together, who won it? I did, yeah, I did. But the following season after that, he moved to F1, right? Yes. Yeah. And you didn't? No. I'm very interested in exploring that moment from your perspective. You know, you beat the guy and he gets the nod. How was that? Yeah, I mean, it's things that were out of our control, uh, let's say. And, and that's the moment where I was actually about to go work with my dad uh, as a mechanic as well. Yeah, because the program I was in, uh, which was called Lotus F1 Team Junior and Gravity Sport Management, had no money for me to continue uh, at the time. And uh, uh, in, in this transition from 2014 to 2015, um, I was on the phone constantly calling Toto uh, at the time and asking him, you know, if there was any solutions for me or because I've met him during that year because I won with a Mercedes engine in Formula 3. And... Um, and with Gwen, Toto, and, and Fred at the time, Fred Vasseur, we found a solution for us to be able to, to continue racing and uh, to race in, in GP3. And I won the title as well. So I got in the Mercedes uh, junior program. And from there on, it was back on route. But, you know, from Max winning the title, not winning the title, finishing third, and then going into F1, and me not having even an option to continue racing, that was tough to swallow, for sure. Um, and I was very pissed off uh, at, in those times. But And how did you deal with that? Yeah, that was, that was difficult. That was very, very difficult because to me it was, it was not fair that, not saying that I would go to F1 because I always believed that my time would come, that if I put hard work enough, got the results, my time will always come. But in those moments, I wasn't sure that I was going to even continue racing. And for me, that wasn't fair. And I'm glad that, you know, Toto, Gwen, Fred, all these guys saw that it was not fair and uh, found solutions for me to continue. But what did you, and I'm, I'm always interested in the quiet moments where you said you were always emailing Toto and different phone people calling. looking, or phone phone calling, calling. looking yeah. for solutions. But yeah. I'm interested when you go back to your parents' home in Normandy at that stage, what are you saying to them? What are they saying to you that keeps your spirits up and stops you falling into yeah. despondency? 
Yeah, well, did you call Toto? Did you have him on the phone? <laughs> um, so again, they were coming up with solutions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it was always about trying to find a solution. But imagine, you know, I'm 17 years old uh, at the time. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm calling constantly one of the biggest faces in Formula One, you know. Um, but I remember just being honest, you know, and saying, you know, if you don't have a solution for me, that that's it. You know, that's I'm going to be stopping racing. Um, so you are my only chance. That's what exactly I had uh, for Worlds, you know, to, to Toto. And uh, and I remember him saying, yes, OK, um, we we'll wait a little bit. If your current program doesn't have a solution, I will find you a solution. He said that and days have gone, you know. Um, 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, and we're arriving in two late moments. And I remember thinking, you know, Toto has only one word and he's going to call back. And he did call back. And, and he said, okay, we found you a solution. What have you learned then for how to deal with pressure when it really applies itself to you? I think I need that pressure now. Um, that's the thing. If, if there is no pressure and everything is easy, I don't think I'm able to to perform as well, you know. So I'm in need of that little pressure that's going to boost me a little bit more, you know, to be able to perform. I think it's gone into that way now where to get the best out of me, I need to set myself a high challenge. Um, and if the high challenge is there, then I'm going to be able to perform. But if it's all chill, all easy, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, 98% instead of 102, you know. So a lot of people talk about the fact that Michael Schumacher used to create challenge and create obstacles yeah. and create friction because he knew it would make him perform better. Yeah. And I've sort of watched your career unfold, you know, whether it is the early races against Max, whether it is the time that you clashed and then he pushed you after the race, whether it's the, you know, the stuff going on with Checo, um, even you know, your current teammate, when you both got paired together, all the papers were writing, oh, everyone knows they, they don't get on with each other and all this sort of stuff. So I wonder whether you've, throughout your career, had to do that to get the best out of yourself, whether, you, whether you've gone looking for a battle rather than looking for friendship. No, I think, I think that's, that's not necessarily the right way um, you know, to say it. I think the challenge, you know, it comes from more you know not knowing and uncertain about the future always yeah. you know that's what i've been growing with uh, basically my my whole time and and it's always been you know that's it you know i'm gonna have to fight you know for that um and not being settled has been a strength of mine um in being able to perform uh, you know at a better level always yeah so I don't fear that a lot of driver would fear uh, always these these uh, issues, and for sure, you know it's not a nice position to be in. But you know I know that once I'm on track and I got the chance, I will be able to perform. You know if uh, if you know I get the right pressure and that's going to be pushing me. But no, the 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 teammate things and the fights with Max, we've never been able to be fighting on the same league, let's say, because in Formula One because Max had a, a winning car and I had a midfield car. So those are circumstances that's never been, you know, on the same page. You always want to beat everyone that you race against. Um, you need to work well with your teammate, you know, for the team to be able to get the car to a better place. But on track, yeah, you need to, you need to, to finish in front of anyone that you can. It doesn't matter if it's your teammate or someone else that you are fighting with, you, you need to finish in front. And, uh, and I like to be, you know, a tough opponent. 